The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello Rovers fans and welcome to our reaction video as Rovers have made a signing in this January transfer window. Was rumoured, it's finally happened, Deovazio Zeyfouk, that is the first time I am going to pronounce his full name, possibly the last, he will be Zeyfouk from now on in this video, signing on loan for the remainder of the season with an option to buy in the summer as well. So as you can see, I'm joined by Alex Lomax, who's going to join me and giving his reaction to the video. How are you doing, Alex? Yeah, I'm good, Ryan. Uh, just recovering, obviously, from the disappointment in the FA Cup. But I think we're a bit used to that by now, aren't we, to be honest? So it's uh, it's nothing new. So uh, I think it's probably better that we move on and maybe talk about something a little bit more exciting. We will. And you can focus your mind on how to pronounce this guy's name <laughs> because uh, it is one of the more complicated ones. So um, there we go. That can focus your mind for the next few weeks. But you're right. It is exciting news. So let's get stuck into this. So before I come to Alex, just a little rundown for Rovers fans. Um, Devezio Seifuk, um, he is a 23-year-old Dutch right back um, signing from Hertha Berlin in the Bundesliga where he has been for the last couple of seasons. Before that, um, he came through the Ajax Youth Academy um, and then took in a spell at Groningen in that Dutch division as well. Uh, made a few appearances for Hertha Berlin this season uh, and he has been likened to Denzel Dumfries, who uh, had a brilliant Euro 2020 with Holland, didn't he? So um, seems like we're going to be getting an attacking right back. We will come on to that very shortly. But that is a lowdown. And as I say, the big thing here is we do have the option to buy in the summer, uh, which is great news. So um, obviously Rovers getting in and, and doing some good business. We saw it with Harry Pickering this time last year, where we'd obviously got that transfer in the bag, in the window, ready for next season as well. So good that Rovers have done that again. Alex, I'm personally really delighted with this signing because we've been weak in the right-back position with Ryan Nyambi. We'll come on to Nyambi very shortly. Regardless of what happens with Nyambi, we did need a bit of cover there, didn't we? So how do you feel about this one? Yeah, I would agree, Ryan. I think when you look back at the first half of the season, you'd have to say we've been quite fortunate in the last run of games to have Nyambi fit and available because you look at the cover in that position and you think, well, who else could you really bring in? I mean, we've had Hayden Carter there in, early in the season as a bit of a stopgap and we've obviously had McGlure there at times as well. And I would say those probably haven't looked like sustainable options in the long term uh, to use over a long run of games. So obviously we're not being able to rely on the uh, JYC's fitness um this seems like a really important addition um, and it fills a big, big hole in the squad, I think. With the addition, obviously, of um, James Brown as well, uh, which provides that little bit of extra depth as well, just in case um, any unforeseen circumstances happen with COVID, etc. So, yeah, I think it, it's on first glance a, a very good signing and uh, one that I welcome. And uh, I think the last thing I'd say on it is that the last defender we bought from uh, Hertha Berlin didn't, Turn out too bad. I, I remember his, was he called Sambra? I remember him somewhere along the line. So I think he turned out all right, actually, for Rovers. So, um, uh, yeah, I'd be glad if he's half as good. You're absolutely right. And uh, Zayfouk has certainly got a surname that might, you know, get some cult hero status in the Rovers fan base. Obviously, Samba did go on to be a cult hero for Rovers. So in name uh, terms, straight away, Zayfouk is there. So uh, you're absolutely right, Alex. Uh, Samba was brilliant for us. Um, so let's just reflect on why we're here then, Alex. Um, I agree it's a it's a great signing for Rovers. I'm really pleased that we've done this business, but it would have been nice had he been coming in and competing with Ryan Niambi. Um, I wonder if this is one that we were lining up maybe for the summer, but now we're doing this loan with a view to buy in the summer because of Ryan Niambi. Um you know, big, big rumours that Ryan Nyambi might even go in this window. Um, we obviously knew that he probably wasn't going to sign a new contract, but there are heavy rumours linking him with Leeds and £3 million I've seen. 
wouldn't surprise me if we see other clubs come to the fore as well. So I think Rovers have probably been pushed to act now in terms of Zay Fruit because James Brown, I think, is one that we're thinking about for the future. And if we see what happened away at Wigan, you know, in the FA Cup, we had Tyrese Dolan at right wing back. We've seen John Buckley there. As you say, Joe Rankin Costello's fitness isn't great. So we absolutely needed to act in this window. But yeah, we've been forced into this with the whole Nyambi situation, haven't we, Alex? Yeah, I mean, it all boils down to obviously the contractual situation at the club. Um, I think maybe something I haven't maybe put on the club side of things in terms of being balanced in my view is that I think during the COVID time, a lot of contracts went unsigned. A lot of clubs were reluctant to increase players' wages during the, the COVID era. And I think we're kind of still almost coming out of that a little bit at the moment. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of clubs are in the position where they don't know what else other clubs might be offering in terms of wages. I think I think if players think that they can just run their contracts down and get 50 grand a week at championship clubs, I think that era's gone. I think COVID has um, really kind of reset the finances in this league and um, made clubs be a lot more... Ca- kind of say cautious with the finances um rovers as well included in that so um i think the big disappointment for me with ryan Niambi, and i think <clears throat> one of the reasons why he's been singled out a little bit by marbury i think is that you compare his situation with the one to rothwell and lenahan and you might at first glance say well they're the exact same situation i would say they're slightly different you look at lenahan and rothwell and you say well they're both what 27 28 They've probably only got one more good move in them before they may be thinking about moving towards the end of their careers. Niambi's still only quite young in relative terms. I think we forget that. He was so young when he first came into the team that we still actually forget he's probably what only still 24. So um, I think that's probably where the disappointment comes in from Marbury's angle. And I think it's probably why you saw that narrative in the media um, with him uh, saying that he thinks his development's best served by staying um, I think that's probably what he was alluding to with that. So I think Marbury's very disappointed in Niambi with the situation. I don't think he's been very happy with the conduct of the agent in this case. There's been quite a lot of um, comments around maybe the agent not speaking to people at the club and, and, and various things like that, which I don't know if that's true or not, but they're just things that you hear said on social media. Um which if it is true, it's totally unacceptable and you can understand why the club's quite angry about it. Um, And so I would say it's all about the club covering itself for next season. The club has to be planning for next season already. Um, I think it's a very refreshing thing that we're supporting a Blackburn Rovers that's actually looking beyond the next two weeks and actually looking maybe at the next six months. Um, And I think it was a great point. The first sign of that was obviously the Harry Pickering deal last last January. And um, I'm quite happy with the club allocating portions of the previous year's budget to maybe plan for next season. Um, I've got no problem with that whatsoever. So, yeah, very disappointed with the Niambi situation. Um, I think you can probably see him leaving in this January. Um, I can't really name a club where he'd go to. I don't think there's been a bid lodged. I've not heard of one being lodged, but certainly sounds like that's a possibility and um i'd be very sad if he left i would i'd have immense regret about it because i think he could have been the first Namib- namibian player to play in the premier league for rovers which would have been a great story in its own right talking about diaz and things like that but that would have been a great story in its own right and so an academy graduate departing when he could have been very, very high up in the appearance charts at the end of his Rovers career if he stayed long term. It's something I'm very gutted about, but obviously the only thing the club can do is recruit properly and move on. And in terms of recruit properly, um, you know, not much is known about Zay Fouk um, if we move on to him, but certainly it appears to be um, a signing of someone who likes to get forward. You know, I said Denzel Dumfries earlier. Um, We have had some success, you know, scouting Europe before. You know, Thomas Kaminsky is one that immediately obviously comes to mind in terms of the last European scouting that we did. And then you mentioned Chris Samba earlier on, didn't you, Alex? So we have done that well before. Um, As I say, not much known about Zay Fouk. Um, If you are a Rovers fan that watches the Bundesliga, do hit us up in the comments and let us know how he's played. But 
Certainly the underlying data on him appears to be a right back that likes to get forward, but is defensively strong as well. So a bit like Ryan Nyambi, you could say. So it looks like a, a like for like replacement in that. At this moment, I will just do a big shout out to Andy Watson as well, because um, he's developed a metric based on players that have played 700 minutes or more in the Bundesliga this season in that wing back position. Um, and if you look at his tweet from Sunday evening, you can see how Zay Fruit compares to to even players like Mukiele and uh, Alfonso Davies as well. You know, some high end fullbacks uh, within that Bundesliga. Zay Fouke is certainly classed as a high performing, both as a defensive fullback and a wingback. So, Alex, you know, for the fee that we're paying for this guy, for someone who's played in the Bundesliga, which is a good division, you know, on paper, we appear to be getting a good sign in here, don't we? I think it's a no-brainer when you look at the financial side of it, and you can probably explain it with this, that I think the position the club is probably taking is that you sell Niambi now for maybe, what, £2 million, something around that ballpark, and in the summer there is an option to buy for around £3 million. Now, if you look at it honestly in the summer, we're either going to be in the situation, which we all hope for, that we win promotion, and there'll be money available to spend, or we'll fail to win promotion, and Diaz will be sold for a very, very big fee, and therefore money will be available to facilitate that deal. So I think either way, the club is looking at it thinking, this is a no-brainer in terms of doing a little bit of business that might have been done ordinarily in the summer, done a little bit earlier, and kind of all the paperwork behind out, as it were, and, and in place. So... um. It's certainly, from a financial perspective, a deal that makes a lot of sense to me, um, as long as he fits within the wage structure at the club and, and, and everything like that. But I don't see any, any problems with that. Um, in terms of how he wears up against other right-backs in uh, the Bundesliga, um, I think with foreign signings, it's always very difficult to tell. I think you can often get quite mixed reviews on foreign signings and they either turn out to be very much better than first anticipated or a bit worse they did he acclimatize to the league or not um i remember kaminsky we know we were told he was the seventh seventh best goalkeeper for in belgium and he's getting in belgium squads now so uh, i'm not so sure how that worked that one worked out um and obviously you have um samba which is more historical i think the one the thing that i took from it is that the club is still looking abroad um, that was something I was quite concerned about when John Park came in. Not concerned about his credentials, but concerned that focus might shift from Europe to primarily Scotland and Ireland and, and the lower leagues in England. And I think clubs that do their homework and actually look over a wider area are more likely to find players for a good deal. Um, and so it's encouraging that the club is obviously still looking to the European market when the deal is right to do a deal, if it's good for the club and um, everything that I've read and seen and heard being spoken about so far, um, I, I can't be anything other than just really, really pleased with it, really pleased with it. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it as well. And in terms of um, what you want to see from him, Alex, in, in terms of his style of play, um, you know, a couple of things for me, really. So our wing-back formation, if I think about teams like West Brom uh, this season, who I think really used their wing-backs really well against us, I don't think Rovers are a side that pin sides in down those flanks. You know, our wing-backs are quite defensive first and foremost, but... You know, to be fair to Niambi, at times we have seen him maraud down that right hand side. He got a brilliant assist um, in a game a few games ago. I think it was the it was the Birmingham game, wasn't it? He put the cross in, and then Buckley's tapped the ball in. So, um, you know, it sounds like Zay Fouke is going to have a similar pattern of play, a similar style of play in that sense. That defensively he'll be strong like Niambi and can get forward, but. The other thing that's just come in and standing out to me here, Alex, you know, Zay Fouke has, has made 15 appearances this season, but I'm just looking at his recent games. He's been in and out of the Hertha Berlin squad. You know, at times he's only played 35, 45 minutes, once uh, 11 minutes. He's not been in the squad for a few times. He's kind of been in and out of things this season. So is there an element for you that we might have to be patient? And by that, I mean, 
if we can keep Nyambi on side, maybe for the next few weeks, and it might be that we sell him at the end of the window, then Zayfruit might come in in February. You know, is that kind of what you're hoping with this? I'm hoping that either way, that whether it be Joe Rankin Costello coming back to more what we expect of full fitness. Um, you know, he obviously played at the time of recording for the under 23s against Man City. And I think he played the full game or, or a good portion of the game. So that's a good step in the right direction for him. Um, in terms of Niambi, I think it will be a case of when it suits the club in terms of selling him. Um, I think the closer they drive it towards the end of the window and maybe potentially have Premier League clubs facing off against each other, uh, the more likely it is that Rovers get a financially reasonable deal that kind of suits them. Um, I think from the point of view of Zafouk, I want to see something that I haven't seen from Nyambi as often, which is a goal threat. And I know it's kind of a bit of a running joke that Nyambi doesn't score for Rovers and never will and da 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 But, you know, Amari Bell managed to score for Rovers. Um, Harry Pickering has managed it twice this season already. Um, and I don't expect fullbacks to get 10 goals a season, far from it. But I think it just adds a string to your ball if you have two fullbacks that could nick a goal in, in a yeah. crucial game. And knowing that if you've got Pickering on one side... And let's say, for example, Zefouk on the other, who might get a goal, whereas Niambi has been criticised quite often for his, um, I would say, work in the final third of the pitch, uh, that I think it it adds a bigger threat and a, an extra string to our bar offensively, um, as long as he maintains that kind of one-on-one -on -one defending that Niambi's kind of known for and, and appreciated for. But like I say, um, I don't think... The planning will be to keep Niambi longer than necessary. Um, I think Marbury is quite big on having people in the dressing room that want to be there. Um, I think he's, particularly this season, fostered an excellent atmosphere. It, it's quite obvious from the outside looking in that the atmosphere in the training ground is excellent. Uh, the atmosphere in the dressing room is second to none. Um and I can see that a player that maybe has eyes elsewhere not being allowed to kind of hang around for too long. That's just my personal opinion on it. I think you're absolutely right, Alex. And I think Joe Rankin Costello, um, obviously playing um, that amount of minutes that he did in that under 23s game, you know, wouldn't surprise me if we did see him rocking up away at Cardiff in the next game with all these rumours about Nayambi. Um, I can't see Zayfouk being thrown in straight away just with the recent minutes that he's had. You know, Mowbray will just want the time for him to get up to speed. So would not surprise me if we had Rankin Costello at right wing back for the next few games. And then once Mowbray's had a good look at him, uh, then I fully expect him to be in the side. And actually, that might just release Rankin Costello into some of those midfield positions as well. Um, and that obviously adds further strength in depth in that sense. But I think you're absolutely right as well in terms of the attacking threat. Um, as much as we did see Ryan Nyambi maraud down that right-hand side, as much as we did see Ryan Nyambi put in some crosses and get some assists, I wouldn't say he's necessarily someone who you would say is a magnificent crosser of the ball or, you know, strikes a ball really cleanly. I've not seen Zayfouk. He could be exactly the same, but hopefully he's got, um you know, a bit more of a, a regular threat on that right wing back position. Again, Rovers fans, if you know about Zayfouk and his credentials in that sense, please do let us know in the comments. Um, so, Alex, then, final thing then, you know, let's just summarise how we both feel about the signing. Um, you know, in terms of my thoughts, uh, thoughts first, um, it's a signing I'm really pleased with and I'm pleased that we've been proactive on this whole situation. I think Rovers have obviously reached a point with Niambi where we've resigned that he's not going to stay. Uh, and now, obviously, we're seeing a, an immediate threat that he might well go during this window. So I'm really pleased that we've dipped into that market, really pleased that we've dipped into that network in Europe that we've got. Um, I believe he's got the same representative as Thomas Kaminsky. So well done to Thomas Kaminsky's representative <laughs> for putting him towards us. Um, seems like a really good signing on paper. Certainly someone who uh, will offer an attacking threat down that side for us. And do you know what? If he's anything like Denzel Dumfries, who got some goals for Holland in Euro 2020, then that's really exciting. So maybe we'll see 
the wing backs become a more prominent feature of our play, particularly if we do lose Diaz either this January or in the summer. That might just be a part of our play that we develop with really attacking wing backs. You know, Zayfruit one side, Pickering like we saw for for Crew last season as well. That might be a, a way forward that we go with. But yeah, really good signing. I'm pleased that we've bolstered those numbers in that right wing back position. Uh, and if James Brown's there, also pressuring Zayfu, you know, with ranking Costello, Zayfu and James Brown, suddenly we've got a bit of depth in those positions. So really happy with this signing, Alex. Um, how about you? Yeah, I think the the only way that the club could react is in the way they have done. And I think you have to praise them for the way they've reacted to the Niambi ne- situation. Um, I think I'd probably just address my final comments to my views on the whole Niambi thing. Um and I think it's probably only fair to do that because he's a player that a lot of Rovers fans hold in really high regard. Um, and I think the disappointment comes from this, that he was exceptionally raw when he first came into the first team. And I mean exceptionally raw. And we did spend about two seasons or three seasons almost allowing him to make mistakes and learn on the job and turn into what he is today. Um, I think he will go, not necessarily with the blessing of the Rovers fans, because I think there is a little bit of a sour taste there with the way that it's all been handled from his end. Um, But the one thing I will say is, I think, in terms of his history with Namibia, I think, I hope he goes down as, as, as a very good player. Um, in terms of Namibian football history, but overall, I hope he doesn't regret his decision to leave. Um, I think it isn't in his best interest to leave. I don't think it'll do his career any good. Um, You could develop a long list of players that have left Rovers and and either flopped or their careers have stagnated or even gone backwards at times. So... um, I don't think Niambi will look back on this um, and, and think that this was a good decision. But the decision's been made and the only thing the club can do, as I said just before, is they can respond to it and recruit accordingly. And I can only be very pleased with what they've done with regards to the recruitment. And let's hope that Thomas Kaminsky's agent only uh, has uh, high-quality clients because... Um, <laughs> uh, if he's anything like Thomas Kaminsky in terms of a, of a bargain deal, then um, I think we've got a good one. Absolutely. And you're right to, um, you know, just to, to say what you did about Nayambi as well. He is someone that will go, um, you know, with my full respect. I totally get why he's looked for the move. You know, he's got a career to look after. You know, it's a finite career. You know, players are driven financially. And if there's an offer on the table from a, a Premier League club and, and he's happy to sit on the bench for a while, then he absolutely, you know, that's his prerogative to do that. If I was advising him personally, I would have advised him to stay and and carry on. But do you know what? Ryan Nayambi has not been a problem at all. Um absolute maximum respect you cannot say his performance levels have dipped in in any way shape or form so maximum respect to Ryan Nyambi but as we've seen with players in the past you know we've seen many a player come through Rovers players that we've really adored and enjoyed watching um you know Zay Fook is someone that hopefully we can really appreciate and, and enjoy playing at Rovers so let us know what you think in the comments Rovers fans about Zay Fook. are you looking forward to the signing Am I pronouncing his name totally wrong? Let me know if I am, because we're all going to have to get used to this. But as you can tell from Alex and I, we're really pleased with the signing and and great that Rovers have been proactive on it. So we'll end the video there. Uh, We look forward to seeing Zayfouk in his first game. Hopefully he's in a match day squad soon. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please give this video a big like. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and look out for all of our content ready for that Cardiff City Sadly, behind closed doors game on Saturday. We'll see you soon, Rovers fans. See you later, Alex. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods, including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.